Hello Cynical Cinema viewers, it's Michaela, and I'm here to bring you more movie related content. Today we'll be discussing two films that I had really high hopes for but was sorely let down, and others seem to feel the same way about them as well. Both horror films, both foreign films, at least to me. If cinema is your thing, hit the subscribe button so we can keep chatting about film. I post every Wednesday. The Whole Truth is a Thai horror film about a family that's drowning in secrets. Pim and Putt are two siblings that have no choice but to live with their estranged grandparents after their mother has suffered in a brutal car accident caused by a drunk driver. While at their grandparents' house, they notice a hole in the wall. A young girl can be seen through the hole, bleeding, crawling around, vomiting up blood, as you do. We discover later in the film that this mystery girl's name is Pinya. The main plot seems to be the siblings uncovering the truth about their family as it's shown by the young girl on the other side of the wall. However, with multiple plot points, this film misses the mark when it comes to telling a cohesive, coherent, and gripping story. I watched other reviews on this film and research for making this video and was really surprised to find that a few people seem to thoroughly enjoy it. Am I the only one who found it disappointing? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below if you've seen the film. The issue with this film is mostly how much it jumps around. It goes from one plot to the other. There's so many different plot points to keep up with. If you wanted to watch three different movies in one film, I guess if that's your thing, this is the one for you. Let's go over the plot points as I saw them. Plot A, Pim and Putt's mom is in a coma after the car crash. Plot B, the weird grandparents. Plot C, the cheerleader mean girl competition that Pim faces. Plot D, the blackmail video that Putt is threatened with. Plot E, the granddad getting revenge for his daughter by finding the man who hit her car. Plot E, the hole in the wall. Plot D, Pinya and her death. So there's like six different plots going on here. And I mean, some of those are subplots if you wanna get technical, but it was a lot to keep up with. Because it jumps around so much from plot line to plot line, it leaves a lot of questions unanswered. For example, when the bully, whose name I believe is Fong, forgets his phone at Putt and Pim's grandparents' house, it seems like days go by before Pim and Putt both notice the phone in the same position on the couch. How did days go by in the 2020s without the bully confronting them at school about his phone? It was a little detail, but it bothered me. The whole truth introduces so many plot lines to show twists in the story that don't feel fulfilling because all the plots don't connect to each other. They feel random and scattered. Pim and Putt also seem to just things happen to them. They are passive characters, yet there are main characters. They don't figure out that Pinya is their sister by their own investigation. The twist this is explained expositionally by the mom and the grandparents in a standoff that lasted a little too long. The standoff also reveals that Crit, the children's father, did not kill himself like we were led to believe, but that the grandfather killed him. But then, at the very end, it is shown that the mother, Mia, actually killed him. It felt a little too much too late in the film as it happens after the climax of the story when we find this out. For a movie that is two hours and five minutes long, the expectation was high. This movie had a lot of potential, but ultimately felt like a horror movie meets Bring It On. It tried really hard to use the extended runtime to show a lot of story, but wrap it up really quickly without giving the audience a lot of closure. It might have worked better as a mini-series as we could have expanded on these different plot lines and we could have given all of them justice and they all might have made a little bit more sense and maybe it would have been more fulfilling. In a movie, needless to say, sometimes less is more. And very fittingly, our second film is Dos, or Two. If you want to watch a human centipede-esque incest fest that is a bit pretentious, Knock yourself out. We all have our own tastes. Thus follows the horror that two strangers face when they wake up in a bed together, naked and sewn together at the torso. They must find out who did this to them and how they can escape. Sara comes from a world of privilege that causes her to judge David for being a male escort. He reveals that he's had a rather difficult life and that he was an orphan. The movie is slow paced and full of awkward moments. It starts off as a stressful body horror, but turns into a tense romance with an ending that is symbolic of a person who would eat their own ass.
As in, it's so pretentious and it's so random for what we were built up for. It turns out the person doing all this to them is their father because they're twins. And he's the one who bursts into the room while they are doing the do to separate them. It's actually kind of funny because he's scolding them like an actual father would. That was kind of a comical moment. He's like, no, no, stop that now, stop that. As if they're actual children. It turns out that the twins were born conjoined and their dad, who was a doctor, separated them. Their bio mom died and the twins were put up for adoption separately. Now, the dad who is the doctor, who also has underlying schizophrenia, wants to almost turn back the clock by joining them back together. Don't get me wrong, this film made me woozy and squeaky in parts of it many times because of the intense body horror that we're introduced to. However, at the end, it fell short and kind of tried to be deep without reason. There was no real build up to the twins escaping and it could have allotted just a few more moments to build tension or taken away from their time alone in the room and granted more time to the dad's sick vision. The movie ends with both of the siblings seemingly dying as David shoots their deranged father and Sara succumbs to her injuries and the harsh cold and can no longer continue to go on and find help. They die in yin and yang positions and it is concluded that they are each other's balance and they can't go on without one another. I disagree because they were apart for 38 whole ass years. Anyway, cynical cinema viewers, that is what I have for you today. Please share your thoughts below because I know I can't be the only one who is disappointed in either both or at least one of these films. And with that, I will see you next week. Thank you for watching.